most trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Doreen Scanlon. We start with news new at noon today and a new coach for URI. The Rhodey Rams officially introducing Archie Miller as the men's basketball head coach this morning. ABC6 Sports Director Nick Coit will talk to coach live coming up here in just a few minutes. But first, developing news out of Woonsocket today, where there is new video showing what appears to be the moments a student was attacked in the high school hallway, sending the school into lockdown. Down. Today, we spoke to the mother of the victim who is pleading with the school and with law enforcement to do more to protect her child. ABC 6 News reporter Laura Puglisi joins us live in the studio with more. Laura? Well, Doreen, the superintendent and police both say no weapons were involved and that an object that looks like a knife was actually a cell phone. But the mother tells a different story and wants officials to take the incident more seriously. No one teacher. Not one principal, not one person did anything for my son to not continue to be attacked while he was down. A plea for help by this Woonsocket mom. After a video circulates showing her 17-year-old son being attacked in the hallways of the high school. <laughs> Police say it happened on Friday. The school sent into lockdown, an investigation now underway. That video, just even watching it, upset me as the parent because I was in disbelief total disbelief. In the video, you can see a group of students fighting while one person appears to be on the ground. Several racial slurs are said and at one point an object is thrown to the side. Police and school officials say it was a cell phone. One student was charged with felony assault for using that phone as a blunt object. But Costa says that wasn't the only weapon involved. In the video, you can see where my child is on the ground being kicked in his head numerous times. Um, the children use brass knuckles, a belt buckle. They, my son had welts on his back. Um, also a box cutter. Costa says she reached out to police and the school department several times, but feels like she isn't being heard. She wants more action to be taken against the students. Police say they are actively identifying and charging those involved. They're suspended for three days. They're not being expelled. They're facing just disorderly conduct. I need something more than that done. Now we did reach out to the superintendent's office for more information and for comment on what that mother said, but we haven't heard back yet. Live in the newsroom, I'm Laura Puglisi, ABC 6 News. All right, Laura, thank you. And only one item on the agenda at tonight's Barrington School Committee meeting, potential changes in high school program of studies. This involves the honors distinction option. The Providence Journal reports that the honors option for English and history was eliminated. That would create one level of class for all students, but advanced placement courses would still be offered to juniors and seniors. That meeting tonight starts at 7 o'clock at the Barrington Middle School. And we turn now to the weather as we take a live look outside with our sky cam. What a beautiful afternoon out there for our first full day of spring. Chelsea has our first forecast from the Weather Center. Hi, Chelsea. Hey, Doreen. Yeah, another nice mild day across southern New England. Yesterday we made it into the 60s. We're not quite that warm today. We're sitting in the mid-50s right now, but still well above average for this time of year. It is a bit breezy today. The breeze is coming in under the northwest around 16 miles per hour. That's going to pick up through the afternoon. We end up with those gusts still coming in around 30 miles per hour for the remainder of the day. Again, right now, all of us above average. The average highs are still only in the upper 40s for this point in the month of March, but we are running cooler than yesterday at this time. About 5 to 10 degrees cooler in most locations today compared to yesterday. Plus, we have that gusty wind coming in out of the northwest. Most of us in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range, but look up to our north, there's some gusts closer to 40 miles per hour. So it is a breezy day out there, and that continues for the remainder of the afternoon. Other than a few passing fair weather clouds, though, big high pressure and control, and that means that mainly sunny conditions continue for the rest of the afternoon. will be clear overnight, and even as that breeze out of the northwest starts to back down, it's still a breeze from the northwest. Temperatures are dropping with the clear conditions, and by tomorrow morning, we'll be in the low to mid-30s to start the day. It'll be a bit of a cool start to the day tomorrow. I'll have a look at your full week ahead forecast in just a few minutes. Story? All right, Chelsea, thank you. In Providence, the ribbon cutting for a new VA research center this morning. The project broke ground back in November of 2019. It cost $12.8 million. The new facility will employ more than 100 VA workers with a focus on veterans living conditions after service and at the end of their lives. We caught up with Senator Jack Reed at the event as some Republicans indicate a willingness to consider a no-fly zone in Ukraine, something some experts believe would lead to a world war. Military advisors to the president have made it very clear of the consequences of no-fly zone. 
we would literally have to uh, take out uh, Russian installations within Russia. We would have to be prepared to shoot down Russian aircraft. Uh, and that would lead to a conflict directly between NATO and Russia, which could escalate. Senator Reid says the Ukrainians have been able to prevent Russians from dominating the sky with the help we've given already in anti-aircraft missiles. He said a no-fly zone would be a tremendous strategic mistake. And the latest on the crisis in Ukraine now, the city of Mariupol bracing for further attacks after refusing an ultimatum from Russia to surrender. A number of sites sheltering civilians have been hit. There are over a thousand missing from just two locations. President Zelensky saying in a video address that these attacks will go down in history as a series of war crimes. And President Biden is speaking on the phone today with European leaders to discuss their responses to the invasion. He will also be traveling to Brussels Wednesday to meet with NATO leaders in his first European visit since the war began. Moonsaka will be raising the Ukrainian flag at all of its fire stations, police stations and Market Square starting tonight. The mayor holding a ceremony in Market Square at 4 to make that announcement. Priests from local Ukrainian churches will be on hand to speak. Mayor Baldelli Hunt says she hopes the display will encourage city residents to keep the Ukrainian people in their thoughts and prayers. Now to an ABC6 update. The U.S. Department of Labor will meet this week with a Smithfield Concrete Company that it cited in connection with the Rhode Island man's death. Back in October, 33-year-old Matthew Maynard was performing maintenance work at Greenville Ready Mix. We say Maynard got caught in a cement truck's hopper and died. After its investigation, OSHA cited, issued citations rather for six safety violations and fined the company over $43,000. Specifically, OSHA says a lockout tagout program to prevent the truck from turning on was not in place. In this case, that's what we found that the employer did not develop adequate lockout tagout procedures and train employees in those procedures to prevent that from happening. We did reach out to the company last week and again today, but have not heard back. The company continues to operate, but could be subject to follow-up inspections once it corrects OSHA's concerns. North Providence police are looking for a suspect who they say hit a building and took off overnight. A car hit a house on Vincent Avenue, causing a gas leak. Residents were evacuated and gas was shut off in the house. Police called a building inspector to check out the building, but the fire department believes it is structurally sound. Police tell us they do have surveillance footage and hope to identify a suspect today. Well, there is still much more to come here on ABC 6 News at noon. Confirmation hearings begin for President Biden's nominee to the Supreme Court, and it could be a critical day to gauge Republican support. Plus, meet the coach. Nick Coit joins us live with new URI head basketball coach Archie Miller after he was introduced to the Rhodey faithful this morning.
Welcome back to ABC6 News at New. We want to head out live to Kingston where our sports director, Nick Coit, is standing by with just introduced URI head basketball coach, Archie Miller. Hi there, Nick. Hello, Doreen. Yeah, welcome uh, to University of Rhode Island, where it's been an exciting morning, obviously, with the new head men's basketball coach, Archie Miller, with us now and joins us live. Uh, introduced today, uh, Archie, first of all, have you had a chance here after the last, what, hour and a half to, to catch your breath a little bit? <laughs> uh, you know, I think you, when you jump in here in the morning, you know today's the day you expect uh, no no rest. You're, you're going to be on your feet going 24-7, and uh, it's been exciting, though. I mean, uh, I'm my family and I, myself, there's an excitement level, you know, we haven't had in a while. And I think just being at the press conference and feeling the energy um, gives you even more of a strong impression that, that things um, are really, really good here and, and can be better. And uh, we're happy to be here. You said in your press conference that attitude is everything with your players and how you want to run your program. But really, with the way that, you know, the administration here and, you know, everybody that runs, you know, the programs here came after you, it seemed like their positive attitude really rubbed off on you and made you say, okay, well, I think this is a great opportunity. Yeah, you know, I think when you, when you have a, a, some time to reflect and you sit back and you say, you know, well, what's the next step? The first thing that comes to my mind and my family's mind is, you know, the people that you're going to be with every day that are responsible for, you know, helping you achieve you know great success starts at the top and i think um not just the attractiveness of the program or the arena it was the people and i think you know thor uh, and i go back a little bit just in terms of our, our relationship but i've never one time ever been around thor where it's not genuine i've never one time had a conversation with him that felt not authentic and um that came through the phone you know, loud and clear, I think, you know, as I moved on to the president, moved on to some other important people through the university. But there's a commitment level here. There's, there's a want to be great. Uh, we've been great, you know, before. And I think there's an expectation we can get back there and, and do it again. But uh, we have to do it our way. It's going to take some time. But uh, no question about it. I think the excitement level for us is just being here with these, uh, with these guys who've, who've kind of set the tone for us here early. It started with, you know, President Parlange and, and Thor as well but there's a lot of other people you know below him that even along the travels to get here just above and beyond the call of duty you said that this is the most ready you feel like you've ever been and you know the best you could offer as a head coach with all the experiences you've had at dayton and at indiana so what do you take from those into this new opportunity and this new adventure i think we have a philosophy that works i think we have a an approach that works i think like any coach when you get some time to reevaluate you know you know how you want to do things you may tweak some things but we have a good we have a good we have a good way about us in terms of how we're going to do it i think the, the the version of me now is fresh you know it's 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 a zero and zero start um it's a fresh start it's an opportunity to launch off a off a runway you know your way so there's an excitement level that i haven't had in a long time but i just think in general as a as a coach you know for you to feel very very comfortable you have to wake up every day and feel good about the place you're at and uh, that was the number one thing for me. So I want to say this, too, before we toss it back. The, the jacket that you're wearing today, Archie, uh, I know you're a North Carolina State guy. So to have that, you said it was in your closet and it sort of called to you. So we'll call it Keeney Blue instead of Tar Heel Blue, it's correct? Ke it's Keeney Blue. Believe yeah. me when I tell you that. It is Keeney Blue. And uh, I learned Keeney Blue uh, talking to Thor about, our, you know, just the different things. And uh, I was very, very apprehensive about the, uh, that shade of blue until... Uh, he made it okay to be Keeney Blue. But, uh, yeah, this jacket was made uh, for me by a dear friend, and I put it away and said I'll never wear it. Uh, but for some odd reason, this opportunity has come, and uh, it fit. Well, congratulations again. It looks good on you, Coach, and we look forward to talking Thank with you, you down the road here. Archie Miller, the new head men's basketball coach at the University of Rhode Island. Doreen, I know you were wondering about the jacket, so there's your answer right there. Back to you. As Nick, thank you for getting the answer. The first of what promises to be many interviews between you and Coach. Thank you. We want to check in with a few more of today's headlines. Now, the scrap metal plant that's operating at Brayton Point in Somerset must stop operations as of today. Under an order issued by Land Court Judge, all scrap metal operations must cease today and cannot resume until the town zoning board approves it. The operator of the plant will first need to present a plan for containing the dust. Residents there say that dust from the scrap metal operation is harmful to their health.
And Ripto will be holding an in-person public meeting on big changes being proposed to its transit system. A new hub would be created on Dorrance Street, replacing the current transit center in Kennedy Plaza. That would consolidate service into a single primary location and give the city a chance to pursue other projects in Kennedy Plaza. Tonight's meeting starts at 6.30 at the Cambridge Innovation Center on Dyer Street in Providence. It is a big day for public transportation up in Boston. The new Green Line extension to Somerville's Union Square is now open. This has been decades in the making. The $2.3 billion project will bring service to Medford, Somerville and Cambridge. It is the first new MBTA trolley line to open in more than 30 years. The next step for the GLX project will be service to Medford. That should be complete this summer or fall. And Republican candidate for Massachusetts Governor Jeff Deal has a running mate. Former State Representative Leah Allen is the pick. Allen is a registered nurse from Danvers, Mass. Chris Doughty is also running for the Republican nomination. He picked a norm another former state rep, Kate Campanale, as his running mate earlier this month. The Republican nominating convention is in May. Still to come on ABC 6 News at noon, Chelsea has a look at your full seven-day forecast. Stay with us. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Gorgeous day across southern New England. It's our first full day of spring, and this is the view over Block Island. You really can't beat it. A couple people walking along the beach right now. Winds are relatively light over Block Island. Many of us, though, have some gusty winds that we're dealing with today. Probably the only complaint about today. Temperatures are above average. We're in the low to mid 50s right now. 56 in Providence, 51 in Newport, 54 in the westerly area, 54 in New Bedford as well. Average high for this time of year, warmest temperature of the day, shouldn't even be at 50 degrees yet. The average high is 49, so we are clearly above that outside this afternoon. The record for today, set more than 100 years ago, 84 degrees, not quite that warm, but a little bit of a warm up outside today uh, after we had a, a mild day yesterday. Today is, is mild as well, but I have some ups and downs in the seven day, actually some seasonable days in the seven day ahead of us. That breeze from the northwest is actually going to bring in some cool temperatures overnight. We're seeing that wind right now sustain 10 to 20 miles per hour with some gusts coming in 20 to 30 miles per hour for most of us. When the temperatures come up into the 50s, it doesn't really factor in when we talk about a wind chill factor. But overnight, the temperatures are going to dip down 
according to the low to mid 30s, more seasonable. And with even just a light breeze, we'll feel more like the 20s. So a chilly start to the day tomorrow. A little bit of a downward trend for the coming days as well. Highs tomorrow in the low 50s, still above average. And even our seasonable days, we're not talking about big swings in temperatures. We're just looking at some temperatures a little bit cooler than where we're starting the week. On Wednesday, clouds increase. Temps will be in the 40s, hovering around 50 Thursday. This is going to come along with some rain. Friday, we warm up a bit as we slowly clear out. We hover in the 50s for the start of the weekend, but cooler by the later part of the weekend. So as we start to see those average temperatures going up as we head into our first few weeks of spring, we do still get those cool days mixing in here and there, which is why we have average temperatures. Satellite radar and it shows you quiet conditions outside. Again, it's breezy, but it's mainly sunny. A few fair weather clouds coming in and out of the area. Much wider view of the entire eastern seaboard shows you really dry, really quiet conditions for almost all of us. We're looking at a big high pressure system in control, and that means that we have sunshine for the rest of the day today. It's just breezy outside after a little system came through overnight. Tonight is clear and with clear conditions and a wind direction still coming in from the northwest, even with the breeze backing down. Temperatures in the low to mid 30s tomorrow morning, a cool start to the day, especially after a mild morning today. Sunshine almost all day tomorrow. Temperatures top out in that low to mid 50s range once again, slightly above average. And then overnight Tuesday into Wednesday, we're going to start to see some clouds rolling in. Early Wednesday morning, we'll likely see some sunshine, but from there, clouds will continue to increase. We will be dry during the daytime on Wednesday, but by Wednesday evening, you're going to start to see some rain moving in, and this system will be impacting us for Wednesday, for or Wednesday night, for Thursday, Thursday night, and even into Friday before we get get rid of it and start to dry out a bit. Mid 50s outside today, a nice day, just a breezy day, some gusts around 30 miles per hour. Tonight will be mainly clear, it'll stay chilly. Temperatures drop down to the low to mid 30s, so with a light breeze, you feel even cooler. And then tomorrow we stay sunny, temperatures in the low to mid 50s, still a little bit of a breeze, not quite as windy as today. Seven day forecast shows temperatures in the 50s today and tomorrow. 40s on Wednesday though, again increasing clouds on Wednesday, rain arrives late Wednesday. Thursday looks like a steady rain all day long, highs around 50, slow, slow clearing on Friday. I don't think it gets really great until probably into late Friday and into early Saturday. Doreen? All right, Chelsea, thank you. And coming up on ABC 6 News at noon, an update on day one of confirmation hearings for President Biden's Supreme Court nominee. Back now with your national headlines and confirmation hearings are underway in Washington as the Senate Judiciary considers President Joe Biden's nomination of Ketanji Brown Jackson for the U.S. Supreme Court. If Jackson is confirmed, she will be the first black woman to sit on the highest court in the nation. She would be replacing retiring Justice Stephen Breyer. 
Some good news on gas prices. Gas Buddy's data shows Providence prices are down more than nine cents compared to last week. The average price of a gallon is 424. Those prices, though, still 71 cents higher than this time last month. In Massachusetts, the average price is 425 a gallon. That's down eight cents. We'll be right back with another look at the afternoon forecast. Stay with us. Quick look at the seven day today is sunny but breezy temperatures in the 50s. Tomorrow looks good too. We're going to see rain moving in for the later part of the week though. A little bit cooler. All right, get out and enjoy today. Yeah. That's going to do it for us for now. Thanks for joining us. The news continues first at four. Have a great day.